Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're finishing up the engraft repair and we're going to start on a piece of binding. But before we get into that, if you want to enter the guitar giveaway contest, all you have to do is subscribe here at YouTube, then go to my website spenceracoustics.com and fill in that little form that pops up. All I need is your email address and your name so I can contact you when you win the guitar. This is my plan to repair the end graft. First, obviously, I have to get the old end graft out of there. And, uh, you know, I don't want to ding up anything, so I have to be really careful how I approach this. So I'm using an assortment of chisels, carving chisels, X-Acto knife, a uh, few different things like that to get things as clean as I possibly can. We actually use this trick quite a bit around the shop. We use it to fill all kinds of gaps in inlays and Oh, just little dings and dents that we may put into the guitar as we're building it. It's a pretty good trick, but I've never used it on an area quite this large, so I'm not quite sure how it'll turn out. I managed to get most stuff cleaned up pretty good, but in the process I did get one little chip on the side, but I've found the little piece and I'm going to put it back in place. So. Uh, the reason being is it's a little deep and I know later on I don't want to sand that far down into the sides of the guitar. So uh, by putting this back in there, I can retain the height or the thickness of the sidewalls. When I put the glue on there, I noticed that the sides of that end graft, right, right where the edge is cut out, it turned darker than the other side of the end graft. So in a second here, I'm going to put glue on all four sides so that they'll all have the same line. So if, if there is a line there, at least it'll be consistent from top to bottom and left and right. I needed to make a bunch of dust so we can make this repair. But I didn't want to use maple. I wanted to try and use a, a wood that's a little bit lighter than maple because when you put it, mix the dust with glue, it actually gets a little bit darker. So I'm trying spruce and I'll see how that works out. I mixed up a little of the spruce and it's more in the right color tone I think. If you use maple like I did on this stir stick here you can see it's quite a bit darker. And then that stick is maple so that actually matches a little closer than the dark. So I'm going to do this using spruce. I got the dust and the glue mixed up into a really thick paste and just started spreading it in there. My big concern when doing this was that I was going to get things too low or too high and then have to sand it for an hour. So I carefully spread it in there with an old gift card. Now what I thought I would do try and put in some smaller pieces of shell. Of course there was more sanding. Now this is the part that really had me worried. I didn't know whether the glue was just going to chip out or come out in a chunk or what, but as you can see it actually cut pretty nice. With the end graph finally complete, it is time to start working on some binding. So the first thing you have to do is just clean up any fuzzies that you find in the channels. because You don't want to have a little piece of wood that's holding your binding out or sticking out of the top or the sides of it. So you got to clean things up first. Then I started measuring and marking out for the binding um, up by the neck. Now this is kind of a tricky area. It's really... Um, 
it's more of an advanced thing so if you if you decide to build a guitar at home I suggest your first one or two or even three guitars that you do not build a cutaway because they're just a little bit more complicated and more difficult That was freaky! I'm taping on a little piece of maple here to give myself a reference point. If I didn't have that piece, the first piece of binding would end up stopping in mid-air at some imaginary point and I wouldn't know where exactly to cut it. But with this piece in place, now I know exactly where to cut the first piece of binding and I can get it sized properly. I always start by getting my binding lined up right in the waist because that bend really can't shift forward too much and it can't go backwards too much. So we got to put that in place first and then once it's secured I can start moving to the front and the back and getting the binding taped in place. Um, first thing I want to do is just get it more or less in place so I can mark the ends, the front and the back where I need to cut them and, and what angles I need to put on them. Then I can take the binding back off, uh, run out to the sander and sand down to the correct size. But actually what I want to do is leave a little bit oversized so I have a little bit of room for adjustment. I wasn't thinking when I taped that stick to the table. I really needed a square so that I could cut a 45 degree angle on either the left or the right side. Now I changed my mind in the middle of doing this. Usually I put my binding on with tape, then I use CA glue to glue it in place. But I was thinking that on this one I might use wood glue and glue it on to try and get fewer um, glue lines. But the problem with this method is you're much more likely to get gaps. So I weighed my options and I thought I would rather have it be gap free and maybe a glue line rather than having no glue line and gaps all over the place. So I'm just kind of picking the lesser of two evils in this case. However, when it comes time to glue on the top or the binding onto the top, I will use white glue because I don't, I don't want to get any glue lines against that white top. I wanted to wait until I had a piece of binding on here to show you the finished product, but you can see there's a little variation in color between the end graft and the binding. That's okay. It, you know, maybe if I did it again, which I'm definitely not, but if I did do it again, I might make this like black. Um, that's about the only thing I may have changed or may change if I do it again um, on another guitar, not this one. So. Considering what we had to go through or what I went through on this thing and um, I think it turned out pretty good Now in another video I'm going to explain these 
shell pieces and what I was thinking on that, but we don't have time for that today. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good weekend.